it's one of those things that has to be in your blood to do it. Because <laughs> to lay under a beet lifter at 2 in the morning and scrape mud in freezing cold weather, not a lot of people would want to do it unless you're kind of born with it. I enjoy that challenge, but at the same time, you can't take on that challenge forever and not get paid to do it. You'll be out of business. Three families on this farm were the fourth generation of Halkrins to run this land. We were actually one of the inaugural shareholders at Southern Minnesota Beet Sugar Co-op back in the 70s. My dad and my grandpa were original shareholders. There's a lot of our shareholders that start to feel like for all the work and risk that's involved, maybe the return just isn't there anymore. And so you can imagine why we're really uh, protective of trying to make sure that um, our sugar beet industry is healthy because people aren't willing to take that extra risk when corn and soybeans are a little easier to grow. I think in this country we've gotten in too much of a cycle of killing an industry and then taking taxpayer dollars to try and kind of help out the people we just sabotaged. And I want to see a strong farm bill because that's the best rural economic development tool we can use. And I know it says farm on it, but it really should say rural community bill because that's what it does. And especially for areas like this, certain cane areas where there's a sugar production area, it is of utmost importance to have that in the farm bill every time it's written. Because otherwise these communities that rely on sugar for jobs, for tax dollars, whatever it might be, they're going to go away. We want to keep an industry alive and vibrant. And so that's, that would be my message to Congress. Think about rural communities, not just farmers.